Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. Chuck here. We have a list of nine properties. So it's a pretty quiet Friday. Um, here's the thing. I've got this book here. It's called a Market Education Handbook. And it's given to any client of ours uh, who's going through the experience of buying a home with us. And so what's inside of here? I mean, there's a walkthrough of the 10 steps to buying a home. Uh, there's flow charts here. So when you look at uh, all the way from the education steps, all the way to making an offer, doing research, negotiations, uh, removing conditions. I mean, there's a lot of things to do. I mean, typically we look at probably 50, 60 people involved in a real estate transaction. We talk about you're easily signing 100 sheets of paper by the time you're done. So there's a lot of things that you want to know before they actually happen. Uh, the buyer representation in here, we've got mortgage, um, some good mortgage contacts that we really trust. Uh, we have how to read a listing, right? So how do you know when someone's got an offer on, on a place? If you've watched Daily Homes, you might know what ELF stands for. A lot of people still don't or WCs um, or GDOs. So that it gives you all the short forms. There's, uh, there's also the a closing cost breakdown and we do that with all of our clients. We don't want them to get caught off guard by hidden costs. That's the phone. Anyway, I'm gonna keep talking uh, just because I like to hear myself speak. No, I'm just kidding. So land transfer tax. So how much is your land transfer tax? It's all here. Heat and hydro. There's even a handy little mortgage comparison chart. So at different interest rates for different time periods, how much will your payment be per thousand dollars? That can be a really helpful budgeting tool. And then here's one that people like too, is oftentimes when you're making an offer is as a buyer, you don't have a lot of time. Uh, we do our best to read through as much as we can because it represents a rather large commitment on your behalf. And so what we like to do is just have what an offer looks like up front. So you can read this stuff and we've actually got the red writing in here in the offer is put there so that we can explain in normal person's terms instead of legalese, which is almost its own language, what this stuff actually means. So that's all in the market education handbook. And so if you want one of these, it's basically a privilege given to the clients who choose to have us help them on the buying side. So I'd love to share that with you. Uh, if you're thinking about buying a home, you know we're out there, we know what we're doing, and, uh, and we provide tools like this that make it a safe and profitable and hopefully a really fun experience for you. So let's get started with today's list. Okay, so the first one is Maple Avenue 310, 260 with a 273 a month condo fee. We did a similar analysis last week of how much this actually costs. Top of my mind, you're probably 1500 a month on this. If you put 5% down plus closing costs, which would be something like probably $18,000 up front. Now, you really can't get much less than this. Sometimes you'll see a lower price over at like 81 mil side, but for sure under 300 in Milton right now, you will have condo fees. Almost under about 370, you're gonna have condo fees. Uh, that's just the way it is. I had a lady who called us last week, 180,000 budget and uh, can't do it. 10 years ago, I could have helped. We can't do it now in Milton. It just doesn't exist. You're gonna have to go further out. Um, however, there are some people that self-impose budget limits, not knowing how cheap it is to actually get money. And the other thing is people say, hey, you know what? It's not a good time to buy. Prices are too high. I understand that, uh, you know, I even look at what my home is worth and I think, I don't even know if I would pay that for my home. However, that's the reality. 20 years later, I've never heard anyone regret buying anything. And the environment we're in is that homes have gone up in Milton in the last year. I don't know what will happen a year from now, but in the last year, the average price has gone from 480 to up in, in the 550s, which is a 15% increase which is huge. That's $70,000 in a year for the average price in, in, in Milton. So that's more than a thousand a week. You can't save that much. You can't save 70,000 in a year. 
uh, unless maybe you stay with family and you have zero overhead, but very few people clear that amount after taxes and after all of their other expenses. You'd have to make 150 a year to even save 70,000 with probably no more than 500 a month in actual expenses for car, groceries, anything like that. Anyway, that was a bit of a rant, but the point is buying something like this, there's always going to be very consistent, steady demand because it's the low hanging fruit. It's the, it's the um, entry point really for the market in Milton. Now Attenborough is 389.013, kind of an interesting, unusual price. Maybe 13 has some significance to the sellers. We looked at Deverell yesterday at 379. It's the same model as this one. This one has a couple of extra things, some crown molding, um, some pot lights, I think Deverell had hardwood stairs. This one has carpet stairs, but it has hardwood on most of the flat uh, floor areas. I could put pot lights in 100 bucks a piece, plus I could do some crown molding, and I could turn Deverell into this, or at least something similar to this, and it wouldn't cost me $10,000. So I lean towards Deverell. There's also the one on Bernard at 369 but it might need some investment in, in structural things like uh, furnace, AC, roof. I don't know, I haven't seen that, but that potentially for the age of that home might, might have that too. So really it's almost like you're gonna pay 380 for something Deverell or, uh, you know, or something like Bernard. These guys are on the high side, but they're also very nice too. You know, so a lot of times it comes down to when you go see this home in person, how does it look? How clean is it? Clean will make you a lot of money, okay? So I like Deverell, but the real test is when you go see it in person. Now Dorset Park is an area in Milton, predominantly built in the 70s uh, between Main Street and Steeles and Ontario and Thompson. Uh, nice place for getting bigger lots. This one on Frobisher is, is kind of a corner lot. The same house, the same model sold um, I'm gonna say maybe four months ago for in the 530s and I might even argue the one in the 530s was more appealing than this one it's hard to tell with dark photos uh, from the kitchen you've got a walk out and there's a deck right there so you don't really have a backyard per se you have more of a, uh, a side yard on a home like this um, the prices have been all over in Dorset Park so it's really hard to say where this one fits in in relation to the others and and it tends to what we see in this neighborhood is you know real rapid appreciation and then kind of flat and then up and down and all the sideways and i look at something like the one we have on say talk four bedroom two washroom and it's at f uh 529 it's forty thousand less and i think it's in better shape this one will have a slightly bigger lot but it's not that much different 251saytalk.com and for some reason, another variable in terms of pricing, I mean, sometimes it's very linear and specific. Same model sells, you know, this one at hardwood, this one didn't, $5,000 difference, very tight price ranges. But this model, it's called a Quincy Corner. It's just under 1,900 square feet. It has, it always has an interesting history. There's a huge variation in sale prices. I saw one of these that sold in the 600s that was so bad that I had to take a shower after seeing it. I almost threw up in the house. It smelled awful, it was filthy. And I look at something like this on Wilkes and I go, hey, they're doing well. That should, to me, that, that should be the first shot because you look at this, you go, ah, looks like a semi-detached, looks like a single car garage. I think you have to be overt about the fact that you are detached with the double. This is the angle in my mind that you have to take on this home, but a lot of agents don't you know will it affect their their bottom line and their their future maybe maybe not but uh if my life depended on presenting a home uh the way that i believe is best lead with that strong double car garage because this is one of the least expensive double car garages that you're going to find just because the size it's a little under 1900 square feet nice looking staircase there's your front door so it's the first thing you see so the impression level bang right away is very strong crown moldings uh just really clean tidy great looking colors in here stylish uh trendy colors 
I say trendy, but it's uh, this is more of a classic, I think, color scheme. It's uh, it won't go out of style. Four bedrooms plus a laundry and two bathrooms up on the second floor. There's a lot of it's very functional up there. There is not a, an inch of wasted space on this model. And then you've got a big wide yard in the back too, including trees that'll probably grow in and give you some good privacy. I like this one at 619. I think it's a really good price. And for what else sells in this range, even seeing all the single car garages, to me it makes a lot of sense. Now Harkin is 835. What we've seen sell around the 830 mark are homes that are four or 500 square feet larger than this, green space, finished basements. That's gonna be tough for them to go against, but what they have Oh, and the other thing is the lot size. It's a 38 foot lot. A lot of the homes that sell above eight are on 40, 50, 60 foot lots. Where they're making it up though is quality. I mean, this home is seriously upgraded. Waffle ceilings, nice looking, big, thick, fat moldings. Uh, stone walls in the family room up on the second level. Uh, chandelier over here, which you don't get the angle on, but Boy, oh boy, nice. Even the casings around the door are all plumped up and very, very nice. Lovely home. I have a feeling that this one and Wilkes look even better in person than they do in the photos. And that's not something that many people can brag about. Uh, you know, maybe someone falls in love with something like this. It would be one of the smaller homes that have sold over 800 uh, this year. So that's the list. We've got eight on the Toronto Real Estate Board. We've got one more on the Oakville Milton Board. And uh, that's it for me. I've got my birthday on the weekend. And then we're back here on Monday with more Milton Daily Homes. Have a great weekend. And uh, if you want one of these, just call us up and say, hey, we want to sit down with you and have a chat about buying a home. Have a great day.